Now, protests by politicians aspiring to be elected leaders are common in Nigeria. But the kind of depth of feeling we saw across this country, particularly amongst the youth over the failed bid by the Labour Party's Peter Obi and Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed in the 2023 presidential election is rare. Some of their supporters were almost hysterical after the Electoral Commission INEC declared the APC candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu the winner a declaration that has now been affirmed by both the Elections Petitions Tribunal and the Supreme Court. For those obedience, as they are known, Mr Tinubu's victory signified an absolute power trip by the ruling APC party and a broken electoral and judicial system. So for them, the heart has gone out of Nigerian politics and all they can ultimately hope for as they look towards the next election in 2027 is a change in the way governance and elections are conducted in Nigeria. This judgment amounts to a breach of confidence of Nigerians have in our judiciary. To that extent, it is a show of unreasonable force against the very Nigerian people from whom the power of the constitution drives. INEC displayed incompetence in the conduct of its statutory duties, the judiciary has largely acted in defiance of the constitutional tenants, precedents, and established ground rules. Going forward, we in the Labour Party and the obedient movement are now effectively in opposition. Our mission has been more about anchoring a new Nigeria and it remains unchanged. Pito be there. So will the politicians in power pay any attention to these loud calls for reform? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Pleasure and duty, Charles. Really nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Now, a fairly determined speech there by uh, Peter B. today. What was the point of it? That the judgment eventually and ultimately from the Supreme Court stands accepted largely because we can't do anything about it. We reject it. We disagree with it, and we cannot accept it, but it stands accepted because there is nothing we can do. That is the end for, of the road for Excellency Peter Obi and myself as candidates. But I think as this um, interview progresses, I will be able to tell you um, another point of view. And if I may just begin now, I'm not here to tell you, to tell Nigerians that oil was discovered and we forgot about agriculture or that there is unemployment leading to insecurity. I'm here to, um, for the sake of my country, say things that matter. I'm not here to regurgitate. I'm here to rescue Nigeria. Mm. Well, let's move methodically Good. In, in that regard, because um, before the swearing in of President Tinubu on May the 29th, I mean, to give this a bit of historical yes, yes, context, yes. you were um, emphatic and clear and almost urgent in your call for Mr. Tinubu not to be sworn in. What were your fears and concerns? Because he's obviously been sworn in and the world hasn't come to an end, has it? Nigeria may come to an end if the world doesn't come to an end. But very valid question. I feared for Tinumbu himself, for himself, from himself. I feared for the reputation of Nigeria. You see, the international profile of global leaders has risen astronomically. To the extent that royals even discipline their own. Look at the profiles of gentlemen like uh, Xi, Jinping, Xi Jinping of China, 
all across the world. All of a sudden, we were faced with the dilemma of having to present to the world who our own president to, to be was. And uh, I was one of those who knew that the answers were not good. The whole country would be put to shame. The last time I spoke, I nearly brought Tinimbu's uh, ambition to a screeching halt. This is evident by the uh, events that followed immediately afterwards. One minister wrote the DSS on his company stationery. I don't know how that is possible. And uh, another minister, you know, skipped ECOWAS, skipped AU, and went all the way to Washington to report me. Uh, and Nobel laureate, a very, very senior citizen, inviting me to a national debate. And uh, I'm not that smart enough, even though my dear good friend Chimamanda acted on my behalf. And then DSS coming out a week later, under duress, of course, you could see, to do the bidding of that minister. This shows they were scared. My simple point was that no constitution or any part thereof shall be breached in order to install a president. And if that is done, that presidency will remain unconstitutional. And I remain on this point. I pointedly say he must not be sworn in. They have gone ahead to do it. It is not the first time. Out of 16 heads of state stroke presidents of Nigeria, nine were not elected. Seven were out of that seven, one still remains challenged, Al Haji Tinumbu. Challenge. And that is because of the constitutional breach. Now, my attitude from day one was that based on experiences, let's forget anything electoral. I know the system deeply. My boss, Obi, knows the system deeply. Let's go for the constitutional point. Uh, yes, of course, there is that issue of the for future. There is the forgery. But the clearest one we could get was on the FCT point. Now, get that FCT point. Get him not sworn in. There are at least two other constitutional channels while sustaining democracy that we could have followed, but they wouldn't. Right. Well, in that regard, um, it yes. must have been another aftershock for you then, because both the Election Petitions Tribunal and the Supreme Court have affirmed President Tinubu's victory. I, I wonder to what extent that has left you personally, politically shaken and unsure of the ground Point of that correction. you're talking about. Point of correction. And this is where I respectfully defer. And it is within my fundamental human rights and constitutional rights to defer. The petition court and the Supreme Court, please quote me on this, did not actually affirm the success of Tinimbu's presidency. They upheld the unconstitutionality of that election. And they are happy for it to remain so. And they have the power. Nobody can do anything about it. That is why we said it is an unreasonable show of force. If there was something we could do, we would stop it. But we are law-abiding citizens. That is why I'm here sitting with you today and still complaining. Mm. I was not shaken one bit. I will never be shaken by certificate forgery by uh, forfeited money over narcotics. I will never be shaken by IREV switched off in the middle of the game when they saw us winning. Labour Party won 2023 presidential elections. No doubt about it. They are cheats, they are bullies, and they have taken full advantage of the situation in Nigeria. When you ask me what is the situation in Nigeria, 
I will go ahead and tell you some fundamental things that uh, say why we are in this situation today. Right. Can I go ahead? Yeah, yeah, but let, let me ask you this, though, yes. because the, you're making the point, um, the points you're making, um, obviously, as you said, that it's your you know, right to, it, it to air your, right. Your, your sort of uh, yes. assessment, but we are now unquestionably in the Tinubu era, um, and he's clearly made some bold moves since he's been, he was sworn in on May the 29th. What do you think his presidency has delivered so far? Disaster. There is nothing bold or special about making appointments. Anybody can make appointments. Any right-thinking businessman, any public servant can make appointments. There is nothing. People jump over you, pay money, buy appointments. Most of the appointments you see are Well, that's an for. allegation we can't uh, substantiate, of course. Uh, anyway, what I'm saying, there is nothing about uh, making appointments. You should be talking about the Naira has fallen down to 1,250. 1, you should be speaking about 26 Nigerian soldiers that were killed in neighboring Niger state something that has never happened in all Nigerian military missions throughout Africa. Nigerian military are dreaded because they are good, they are professional, yet in our backyard they kill our soldiers. On that in Umbu, what is bold in having your soldiers being killed? To, to rub it in, they followed with killing another eight soldiers. To rub it in, villages almost on daily basis, that is the news, everywhere in Nigeria. This man has delivered nothing and is poised to deliver nothing. Well, they, they cannot, they have not moved an inch Nigeria from consumption and waste to production and they will not do it. They will not stop the killings and start the healing. Well, they will not stop the stealing and start the keeping and right. they will not stop slide of Nigeria and they cannot start the climb. Well, I mean, the international community, certainly some in the international community, would beg to differ with your assessment because yes. I wonder what your reaction is to the latest Fitch International Ratings Agency, which is hugely respected across the world, and that is the front page of this day newspaper today. Fitch has rated Nigeria's credit worthiness as stable. It's given it a B minus. I mean, surely that suggests that international confidence, and it did actually say that in the Tinubu government so, is, is growing. Wrong. Well, can, yeah. I, can I just make okay. the point? Even though, in, in fairness to some of the points that you're making, according to Fitch, that rating is constrained by what they described as weak governance, low non-oil revenue, security challenges, which you talked about, high inflation, low forex reserves, and weakness in the exchange rate framework. Nevertheless, for somebody who just started in office about five, six months ago, to have that kind of rating um, from... I have a lot to say. If yeah, go ahead. Allow me. To have that kind of rating is it's pretty impressive, isn't Charles, it? Charles, it would have been more productive if you listen to Nigerians on the streets. More productive if you go into the villages and find out from those whose families are abducted. Find out from average Nigerian worker when they go to buy food stuff in the market. Not fish. Fitch don't know you. They don't know Nigerians. They don't know. Look, I live on statistics. I eat, I sleep statistics. So does Obi. We create statistics. Yeah, really. but Fitch are the people who give... Are you forgetting... Who the impress the international community to bring their investment into this country? Are you forgetting the likes of Fitch and uh, those rating agencies? Are those who were largely responsible for the 2008-9 financial crisis? But look, let's not go into those lines. Let's come back to Nigeria. All I'm telling you, you're looking the wrong way. If you want to know what's happening in Nigeria, come to us in Nigeria and don't read those statistics because they are misleading. Uh, they always speak about growth. It's not growth actually that matters. 
those figures that give you because there is nothing as misleading as far as welfare is concerned as growth. The, the stethoscope you use in measuring the heartbeat of an elephant, mm. for example, China, cannot be the same one you use to measure the heartbeat of a rat. Smaller countries, I won't call any country a rat. Do you understand? Leave that aside. Let's come back to Nigeria and speak about what is happening in our streets, in our villages, in our markets. These people have not done any bold step. The only bold thing they did was to shut down IREV. The only bold thing they did was to misuse, misapply force on uh, the weak Nigerian institutions that we have. Now, ask this question. For someone that has been playing God, in quotes, for such a long time like al Tinumbu, and it is time for a mortal, like maybe Obi, or somebody to put him in his right place. For someone who has wielded so much power in a country like Nigeria, where is that power in the last six months for them to apply in our welfare and our security? They cannot do it. They are in power for themselves, for their ego, for their wealth, for their comfort, for their own considerations, not for Nigeria. We are pained about every soul that is killed, that is abducted and killed. We are pained by every naira that is paid as ransom. And we are committed to stopping that. And stopping we will. And I'm telling you, give you these mean people- as, as, a, as a member of the opposition? Stopping we will whenever we get the power to do this. So between and, now... And, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, no. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. Where is the power, the same kind of power they used in getting Mahmoud Yakubu 4 a.m. to declare them against the provisions of the Constitution? Where is that power to prop up the exchange rate of Naira, to stop the killings? They don't have it and they will not do it. Well, you did say that you wanted to move forward because yes. obviously we've established the fact that the election is over. You have grievances um, against the results, but he's been affirmed by the Supreme Court. You, you said methodical. Let's right. now be methodical. What I want to tell you is that uh, the big picture, we say democracy is government well, let me just go. Democracy is not government of the people, for the people, by the people. Democracy is government of the people who have earned their rights, for the people who can protect their constitution, by the people who can exercise level, civil liberties. So given what the, When they just, say people, right. what kind of people? The people who will fold their arms while their constitution is violated, then democracy is not for you. I have said it. It belongs to only those who can practice it with due respect. So, so just, hold on, just hold on. Right. I was going to ask you what your assessment of uh, the state of democracy is in Nigeria, given is, what you just said. It is poor. The people have to wake up to the challenges. For a people that are ready to accept anything, then anything will happen to them. Again, in quotes. You see, a fraction of a fraction of 1% difference in a political DNA of a society can spell the difference between servitude and freedom. Last year, you saw it. Indian farmers sat in a location for one year because of one obnoxious hmm. government policy until Indian government reversed it. Before the war in Israel, Israelis were in the street for 16 weeks counting. You can count so many other countries. Nigerians are not yet ready to do this. As I'm speaking to you, the likes of my former friend who would say is treason is all that. I am educating Nigerians. Rise up for your, 
for your rights. No justice of Supreme Court will give you democracy. Yeah, you but, have to go but, out. But they, they're Listen, not going to be able to finish. reverse that, let me are finish. they? They will. I mean, they can Nigerians, can't. this is... This Constitutionally, is, no, they no, can't. no, no, no. Constitution and legal. And this is where I differ. With all modesty, okay, I don't mind being alone on this. But I know I'm not breaking any, any law, and I have never had a criminal record. So what are you but actually calling on the finish. people to do? I, I'm well, we're, calling, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. I'm getting to that. Sure. I'm Just saying, that we're running out of time. So I'm saying to, yeah. that, and again, this is, um, this is instructive. I'm saying that we, the people that stood to form the Nigerian constitution today, it is not over. For we, the people, power is that which remains standing when there is nothing to oppose it. A leader is he who remains followed when there is nobody to challenge. Authority is that which is implemented when there is nothing to stop it. They have the leaders in place now with wielding authority with political power. But power and sovereignty belongs to the Nigerian people. We, the people, on whose behalf an elected government is exercising that authority. Now, where the people are dissatisfied um, with the rulings of their courts, they own Nigeria. Al Haji Tinimbu does not own Nigeria. Peter Obi does not own Nigeria. Yeah, but the a Nigerians on the streets right. own Nigeria. But the and ABC, listen, I'm getting to the point. You the ABC me, would argue that you don't listen. own Nigeria either. That, that you, you, Nigerian just, you have people a portion own, I'm of the electorate that, it is not that voted over. for you. I'm not telling you it is not right. over. I'm telling you it is not over. For Peter Abia and me, it is over. For we, the people, the Nigerian people, right. at any point in time, they can take back Nigeria. Right especially where their constitution has been violated, especially where all that the Supreme Court ended up doing was to sustain the unconstitutionality right. well, of let, a certain election. Let me come in here, because yeah. between now and 2027, yes. which is when the next presidential election is due, how do you think things will play out? And what role do you see yourself and Peter B and the Labour Party playing in that? When period? the Nigerian people rise to defend their constitution, anything can happen. And well, that this is like, not. That sounds quite a bit worryingly. I'm. Look, we are. We are. We are in a worryingly frightening situation. I told you I'm not here to repeat what you've been hearing, and I was prepared to come here. I have never had a criminal record. I love my peace. And I'm repeating that when the Nigerian people decide, Nigeria is theirs for the take it. it and any fraudulently government, elected government, is fair game for them. Nigerian people have the right, the constitutional right. As we speak now, DSS can go and interpret. They have lawyers there. Police, IG and every day can go and interpret. The Nigerian people have that power, not Obi or Atiku or anybody. Nigerian people have the power at any point in time to take their country. All they have to do, not even seek approval, they give notice. It's interesting. And listen, right. you turn away the barrel of your guns, away from the Nigerian people, and point them at the enemies of Nigeria. Mm. This country belongs to Nigerians. Well, you've made that when, point. When Nigerians decide, mm. but, but if they want to practice democracy, right. they will take this country. It has happened before. The military decided they took Nigeria for so long, they fixed Nigeria and handed it back. Now, whoever thinks that the Supreme Court will give democracy from any courtroom, the way it appears now is mistaken. It, it's interesting. Nigerians have to go out. Right. You, you've, and, you've, you've made that point. Nigerians have to go out right. and, and democracy. And this is not a treasonable comment right i am not a careless person mm. i have never i so you've you thought the things you're I saying thought through. It through very right. very well well this is the the constitution is made by nigerian people 
the Supreme Court is a sub of a sub of one chapter that the Nigerian people constitutionally right. came out okay. that we the people. And the same constitution says that no person or groups of persons shall take over the governance of Nigeria or any part thereof except as pre prescribed by this right. constitution. And go and read the constitution of Nigeria. The Savin al Haji Tinumbu Malam Shetima government breaches the Nigerian constitution. Right. Okay. Can I come in here for a minute? Yes. Um, because you mentioned um, Kashim Shetima. Yes. Your brother, the spokesman of the Northern Elders Forum, Hakim Baba Ahmed, is of course now serving as a special advisor on political matters to the Vice President Kashim Shetima, which means that he might have to help Mr. Shetima to devise a strategy for dealing with political opponents such as yourself, his brother. Does that rub you up the wrong way, given all the things you've just said about that government? Your own brother is now working for them? Charles, I am after the government. I'm not after appointment. I am after the president and the vice president who were fraudulently elected, unconstitutionally elected. I cannot come down to speak about any appointment. He is by far my senior brother. Uh, so there is no way to say he's an adult or he has his own rights or his own life to live. Our politics are completely detached. And uh, is, in fact, it is his boss I know, not him. Mm. And his boss, since you, you brought this question, is not exactly, he is not exactly a responsible gentleman. With all the things they've been doing, now you, you brought up this issue, I didn't want to talk about it. You see, they attempted something on my safety, on my security, and I was able to find out, 10 minutes to time. And God so kind, I was able to avoid. They tried to get me into one of those yellow houses down the road, get people to come and arrest me there, and use that to rig the judgment. I became so inquisitive, and I, I dodged within 10 minutes, only for me to come and find out, based on strong suspicion, where it came from. And with what I see, then the strangulations in Lagos in the past, yes, they happened, and they were for a reason. The people gone down in Borno State, it happened, and yes, it was for a reason. I think Peter Obi and myself, have been lucky to have stood today to give that uh, press conference. So the least, taking my senior brother to give him an appointment is the least of my worries. I am not in, uh, worried about any appointment. Right, well, let, let, let me bring in another. If he likes, he can go and take the entire Baba Ahmed's and give them ministers. <laughs> I don't mind. Well, let, let, let me I try will and still, I will still. You still stand by the things you say. It is an unconstitutionally which, which, which is uh, impressive Court that you stand firmly by your yes, beliefs. Yes. But, but you were called fascist by the Nobel laureate, Professor because you and Peter B. claimed you had won the election. He used those words. Um, he accused you of trying to force a lie on the Nigerian people. How much did that broadside affect you, coming from someone with such a stature as Wolesho Inke? Uh, please, I respect him too much, and I have more important issues to discuss. Let's go to another question. Right, so you don't want to talk about I don't about talk it. about... Uh, okay. Shoy, can well, you well, come back to Shetima, and I'll talk about Shetima. Well, well let me talk a very, about something... A very irresponsible gentleman. Let me talk about something that Be is he imminent. the vice president or whatever that he is, I'm telling you that he has conducted himself in so many ways in these six months that demean the office of vice president, and I'm not happy about it, especially the way he's been treating our elder, uh, Atiku Abubakar. For, for God's sake... Uh, Atiku Abokari is getting to 80. He is by no measure of, imagine, of uh, imagination Shetima's mate. How can Shetima come out and say that the Kanuris crack jokes with uh, Fulanis, therefore he's going to retire him to Dubai or Morocco? And these are very personal issues. 
What kind of an irresponsible statement is that to me? Well, I, I am not privy you know? to, to having said that. <laughs> For him, I having am, said and that. it is so, true. And, and, and it, obviously, it the vice president's office. So, what I'm office, saying is that leave Shoinka out. Yeah. Bring who matters to me, like Shetima, bring Al Haji Tinimbu. Look, even Tinimbu, I have much respect for Tinimbu. You heard Shawari uh, criticizing me for me calling uh, Tinimbu uh, uncool. I, I call him uncool. I said, You saw the picture that I went to greet him in the mosque, and they said that I went to plead. No, oh, it's just respect. But the fact that I respect his age doesn't mean that I will not call him a drug dealer. Yeah, uh, well, did, or a certificate I, 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 forger. I, I, well, <laughs> I don't think you should call him those things. I will. Unless you have I will. That is why I said do not evidence. And, swear and, him in. Yeah, the but, evidence but, is there. Yeah, but can, can I just make the point that on, on a rise no, no, no. news, we, 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 they have a right to reply to the things that you said. And, Some and one of them will come tomorrow. And, and we're giving them that. One of them that, will come tomorrow. Let them come we're and giving say them that, that right. Let them come reply. and say that he didn't forfeit four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Well, let, let's let them come and say that the. I, I want to. I want to tackle you. What? I want. I want to bring up issues, right. and I don't yeah. mean to interrupt you. My yeah. apologies, okay. but I, I want to deal with issues because we've got about five minutes or so left. I want to deal deal with issues that are upcoming because you did say at the outset you wanted to move forward. Off-season elections are, of course, due on November the 11th in three states, Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo. The Inspector General of Police has just redeployed the Commissioner of That's Police. That's not my line. Leave in it. Imo. The, I, I don't have an answer for you. That's not my line. Right, because I was going to ask you, is it, I mean, we, we saw, for example, the, I mean, to assess the chances of the Labour Party there. That's not my line. Um, come, back, come back to the substance of democracy, of what the Fourth Republic has done. You know, we all have our specialities mm. in this game that we do. I don't know about those elections. Yeah, but you're, 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 you're the vice presidential I candidate am the, but of the I'm party. Not that and vast. the more your party gains um, political traction, speak to me on the, what the I, more it where is I good for you. I know, speak to me where right. I have strength on. That one is for the party chairman and His Excellency, my boss, Peter Obi. They can handle that, but come back to the issue of constitutional breach, come back to the issue of the rights of the Nigerian people, mm. come back to the fact that I keep telling you, it is not over. If the Nigerian people decide to rise, they will reclaim Nigeria. The Europeans came, there was no constitution, and they had power, they colonized Africa. Mm. So power is when you, when you have the power to do and nobody can say. Now, Nigerians can take this power because their constitution has been breached. Right. That constitution is their so own. We, we've they got, had faith. Right. Nigerians had faith. I think you've made that point over and over again. Right. We, we've right. got about three minutes yes. left. Yes. What is your next move? Continue in this line of protecting Nigerian constitution. Continue in this line of um, creating awareness in Nigerian political system. Continue um, in the Labour Party and the obedient movement with Peter Obi. Continue to sensitize Nigerians and then continue to tell the people in power that they have unconstitutionally taken over Nigeria, sustained by the Supreme Court, and they are destroying our dear country. They are destroying the future of our children. And for doing that, I will continue to do, say exactly what I have said right. in this but, but interview. If, if for they, doing that, if they were to there work. is no way to fight an individual right. or group of individuals like to destroy their country or to destroy the future of their children. But if, if they were to approach you and Peter B and the Labour Party and said they wanted to sit down with you and look at the, the sort of reforms, for example, that could be put into Nigeria to make this, this place better for everybody. For example, things like restructuring, electoral reform. Can would, I you, would you participate in that can I, discussion? Well, you, with can can Tinimbu Shetima resign and get uh, the Senate president sworn in to conduct right. a new election? Well, it is Bring unlikely us. that they'll do that. So we cannot, we cannot support them. Okay. We cannot. Anything well. that deviates from how the Constitution provides it, we will not.
Okay. Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, Vice Presidential Candidate of the Labour Party. It was lovely to have you here. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. That.